In this video, I'm gonna talk about the road trip from Norway to Spain and back again. So right now we are in Spain, but we're gonna head back soon. But uh, I did some calculation about this route. Uh, I mean, this whole trip here, and I'm gonna give you guys the experience with it. Uh, so um, you know, normally I will make like a, a long ass road trip, like one hour and one hour each part, and I, I might have three parts and stuff, you know, and then. Uh, you will see some in some episode and I mess around with freaking Shuku in Germany or whatever you know, but now it's just piece of cake You know, I didn't bother making a, a trip here a road trip video here because it's it was so smooth on supercharger It's like ridiculous compared to you know, just three four years ago um, But uh, our final destination here is, is La Senia, which is a little bit south of uh, Alicante uh, now the reason why I chose this location was it was kind of far south, very far <laughs> away from Norway. Uh, but uh, there was this dude who um, who let us uh, like borrow his uh, Airbnb uh, uh, apartment for free. So I was like, okay, yeah. I was you know thinking about in the, actually I was thinking even more south. Like uh, this is like near Murcia, and I was thinking even near Malaga. You know that that was even more south. Yeah, but this is you know far enough. Um, so uh, the whole uh, trip uh, down here was 3,400 kilometers, uh, and then so the round trip would be 6,800. Yeah, and driving down here took uh, actually five days. But okay, so we did hammer it. Like the first, first and the second day was crazy. We did 1,100 kilometers per day. You know? uh, and then we took it a little bit easy on the second day. You know, and we got to uh, to. Um, um, was again uh, Barcelona yeah then we slacked a little bit there in Barcelona stayed there for two nights and then we went over here so it yeah it took it took like four or five days uh, but of course I heard other people they managed to hammer it down here in a, in a model X 75 in three days so yeah that is also possible if I travel alone I could probably do that but you know we we had a puppy well, it's not a puppy anymore but we had a dog with us and uh, uh, usually when you have more people it kind of tends to take longer um, but as I mentioned, you know, the supercharger network is just so insanely good. Like, uh, it's not even a challenge anymore. We have, you know, usually about 50 to 100 kilometers between each of them. And this car can do it just fine. You know, it's, it's a Model S um, 85, which is a classic one. Uh, but I know for the full charge, I can normally do, you know, well, if you drive carefully, close to 400 kilometers but at least i mean motorway speeds you can expect like um at least 250 to 300 kilometers uh, and that is you know proper motorway speed i'm talking about 120 to 140 kilometers per hour yeah none of that uh, slow speed in norway yeah <laughs> so um uh except that okay and uh, the last part in spain had not the best coverage at least in this area so i had to stretch it to about 200 kilometers between uh, superchargers but that was only you know two legs yeah the rest was just piece of cake uh, and the average consumption for this car was uh, around 235 watt hour per kilometer so that's not too bad yeah you know considering this is like it's not even a dual motor but Especially towards the end, you know, the consumption was better and better because of the warmer weather, yeah. Um, and then I should talk a little bit about charging time. And I guess charging time versus traveling time. Uh, so I look at, uh, you know, I use the Google Maps timeline. And there you can see all the details, like where, where, when was I at different time, you know, uh, where did I travel, how long did I stay. So you have everything in there. It's like a nice, it's like a nice log. So I look into the log here and I look at the first day, which is uh, pretty crazy, you know, 1,100 kilometers the first day from Oslo to around Hamburg. And um, uh, that trip was, you know, far from perfect. Because I mentioned we have dog and wifey was with me, so uh, normally when I hammer it alone, I can do it like more perfect timing. But here, many like it happened many times that we stay there longer than needed, and then you can see that on. Okay, so in Udavalla we stayed there for forty-five minutes. That was you know too long. We could have stayed there maybe like half an hour only. And next one also Melbistron. Yeah, I think in Udavalla and Melbistron we were kind of hungry. Uh, I don't remember, yeah, we had some food and then you see in Kyrgyz only 18 minutes so then we, we we just waited for the car and we had enough added some margin, hammer juice and then go for the next one 
And then in the middle part again, we had some more food. And then Busdorf was pretty short. And then uh, Rade, that's the south of uh, uh, Hamburg, that was also slightly longer because I wanted, that was the last one. Uh, and the last supercharger for the night is where you want to juice up extra because then the battery is nice and warm. If you juice up too low, then the next day, um, you know, you might not get the good speed. But on the other hand, <laughs> we actually charge a little bit too much because uh, we, we kind of needed to stop somewhere on the next day and next morning anyway for some breakfast or lunch. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that the charging time, the 2 hour and 47 minutes is not the optimal one. Some of you guys will protest like, I protest! I can. I did it in my Model X or whatever much faster. I only did two hours. Yes, I'm pretty sure you could, could you know, but I'm just giving you a perspective of, you know, like a family or whatever, you know, if you have kids with you. So, um, so at least, okay, let's assume a pessimistic one, the pessimistic result, two and a half hours of charging, right? Um, Probably two hours is also possible if you have, especially if you have you know, newer cars, 100D or whatever, they go freaking far. Yeah, and they charge fast, also they charge faster than this one. Um, and then I look in, in the Google timeline and I saw that uh, the driving was 11 hours. And I was driving barely legal, I was f following the traffic ish, going past the traffic, and then we had some slow, you know, slow, slow parts around Gothenburg, and then in, de in, in Germany, it was also some. <laughs> construction work Ugh, endless construction works yeah so uh, you know that's why i actually only average 100 kilometers per hour again this is something you have to expect when you travel on let's say uh, you know public holidays or whatever you know, on, on high season I, we didn't travel on high season so this result should be you know uh, realistic uh, and then if you count in the charging time i actually averaged 81 kilometers per hour which is kind of slow because i know i have averaged close to 90 kilometers per hour and then some people claim they average over 100 uh, they, they average you know around 100 kilometers per hour including charging time with a tesla so i believe them they're not uh, kidding with me that is also possible and then if you compare this to a fossil car um i try to figure out okay how long will a fossil car stop uh because after all this is you know um it's just a full day of traveling like um, 11 hours of driving and do some stops or whatever so then you probably need to go to the restroom and also you know you have to consider it, it's going to be like a big big family car not like a like a Fiat Punto or a you know, Nissan Micra or something you know so a bigger car consumes more more juice and you probably have to refuel at least once maybe twice or I mean you, if you don't refuel then might, you might have to refuel again in the morning or whatever. So I'm guessing, you know, one or two refuel stop. Plus, uh, you want to eat, you want to go to the restroom, stretch your legs, whatever. So uh, I think one and a half hour of stop during this long trip is realistic. And so that means that um, the fossil car will average 88 kilometers an hour and the fossil car will only travel, I mean, it will arrive one hour before Tesla. So. It's not a big deal, you know. Uh, after all, the Tesla is traveling almost free because you don't have to refuel for money. And also keep in mind that, you know, in Germany, like I mentioned, you know, the uh, because yeah, some of you guys will be saying, but yeah, but once you get to the German Autobahn, you could just hammer it, yeah, get out of the way. Yes, you can, of course, you can do it. I've, I've been in Germany for I don't know how many uh, summers now. Uh, the problem in Germany is that you can hammer it for a few minutes and then uh, 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 road construction uh. so um, yes that's the reality in germany you you cannot hammer it i mean at night yes yeah and then you can get some nice stretches but still you know you you can't expect actually i think if i look into the google timeline i will probably find out that the average speed in denmark and sweden especially denmark and and i would say yeah denmark and france <laughs> 130 kilometers per hour speed limit people cruise at 140 there you know the, the average speed in France and uh, those places are higher and I was cruising at 140 kilometers per hour on the motorway I didn't want to drive too fast because I had these all season studless tires whatever you know so yeah they are rated for 190 kilometers per hour but I was cruising at maximum 140 yeah. Um, so yes uh, uh, the, the, the conclusion with this the uh, 
this like charging time versus is that uh, the fossil car does not travel significantly faster. It's like, you know, 10% faster-ish, maybe, uh, one hour per day, yeah. Um, and then let's look about, look, let's look at cost. So uh, this is the round trip, you know, coming here and back again. So I look at only travel cost. And um, we chose to take the bridge, Öresund Bridge, and then uh, Storebelt, but you can also take the ferry. Uh, you know, from uh, Ludwig, uh, or you can, I don't know, from Christian Sun where you travel, or you can also take that other ferry um, between the uh, Put Garden and Rudby, yeah, Rudby Han. But um, I chose the, the land route. I don't know, it's just old habit. Yeah, I like this one. Uh, it's actually, well, the cost is about the same, but on the other hand, if you take the ferry, the, the Ludwig, the Hitchhals ferry, uh, you have to time it. I mean, it's it, they only have like two departures per day, so it's very clumsy. Uh, and I tested before that. You know, the the land route is as good as I mean, fa as as fast as the ferry. Yeah. So it depends. I mean, if you want to stretch your leg on the ferry or not. Um, but the ferry, at least the Hitchell ferry, will be more expensive. Uh, in general, yeah. Uh, but okay. So if you assume three hundred fifty uh, euros, right, for for the toll roads and the bridges, and toll roads also includes all the freaking toll roads in France and in Spain. Oh, yeah. So I look at Via Michelin um, travel guide, and there are some routes where you can skip some of these uh, toll roads. But the problem, of course, for us who drives a Tesla is that these superchargers tend to be on those like very close or on at those toll roads so if i do some detour then i might have to stumble around to try to get back to the supercharger right so just i took it yeah i just did the easy way took the freaking expensive toll roads like all the time yeah but you know what they say you know people who own teslas they 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 should be able to afford you know five star hotel right and uh, this money is just pfft, yeah pocket money for them yeah <laughs> not trolling at all uh, but a Tesla on free supercharging, um, okay, so it's still free juice, but you still have to pay for, um, you know, okay, I, I talked about it earlier that we spend maybe like four, yeah, four days, in, I mean, effectively, down here was four days. Um, on the way back, we would stretch it to five days. Uh, yeah, so I think that's realistic for most families, you know, they're not gonna hammer it with the dog and the kids and everything, you know, for 16 hours per day. So, um, it's safe, I mean, I would assume that on the way here, on the way back, you will have, you know, three nights each um, way. Uh, so that's six nights, and then how, how expensive is the hotel? Well, I look at the hotels.com and I, I made an average of, you know, 75 euros per night. Yeah, I mean, you can probably get it cheaper. You can sleep in the car. There's, you know, this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, these numbers, you know, there, there will always be people who have higher number than this or lower number than this. Uh, but we uh, we didn't want to sleep in the car here. It's you know, full of crap here and we had the dog and everything. And this is not our car. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, so I would say that when you travel with a Tesla, only, you know, for the traveling cost, it's 800 euros. And then if we compare that to fossil car, uh, as I mentioned before, the fossil car, you, you can't expect, I mean, if, if I say that, okay, uh, so the, the, the brake, I mean, the, the, the maximum is, you know, 1,000, maybe a little over 1,000 kilometers per day, you can, you can manage to hammer it. Um, it, it the fossil cars cannot make 2,000 kilometers a day. They will die from, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so the fossil car might be able to stretch it like 1,100, I mean, 1,200, 1,300 per day, but, in the end, the fossil car will not be significantly faster than the Tesla, because because you, I, well, I explained, you know, you need to juice up, you need to eat or whatever, take a dump, yeah. Type three C, yeah. Um, so um, uh, same there, six nights, uh, same cost, but uh, you have fuel cost, and this again. Uh, I assume that you know you have to compare this to like a big family car. I don't know a BMW 5 Series, something large, you know, um, large Mercedes or something. And those are kind of thirsty, especially if you cruise at 130 or 140 kilometers per hour on the motorway. So uh, I guess seven liter per hundred kilometers, and then times the 68, uh, which is that unit, and then 1.1 euro per liter. I'm not sure how realistic that is, but at least it's it's some 500 euros for the fuel. 
So that's um, a total of uh, yeah, 1,300. So it's uh, significant, significantly more expensive than uh, Tesla, of course. Uh, but one thing I haven't uh, considered is, uh, you know, days away from work because uh, the traveling here takes very long time, like, you know, uh, about a week or so, right? So during that week, you could have been working or something and then you can fly in here like right? and back again so uh, i could have made videos or do some other crap instead of all that like, driving so we also have to consider um the third option which is to fly here with an airplane uh, which is dirty i don't know which which one is more dirty the most schmutz of driving a fossil car or fly here yeah but um i checked norwegian which is a low cost uh, airliner and uh, you can get as low as 150 euros per person but that's only for the flight ticket then you have to add i don't know um bus train or whatever to the airport maybe parking if you drive there you have to consider parking at the airport and then um, uh, this one goes to alicante and then you have to i don't know get a rental car or something uh yeah so um I, I guess it depends because um uh, driving down here in a tesla with full family and dog and whatever uh, will probably be, be you know uh, m the most cost cost eff effective Ugh, i can't speak um and also i guess um it's very convenient because then you have your own car here and you can drive around with it yeah and then also i mean it depends what if what kind of person you are or what kind of family you are if i mean for for wife and i we love driving uh so the trip here was like a vacation itself like we had to we could eat some some food at uh, in germany or in, in in france or whatever you know so it's it's like a it's a vacation yeah but some people of course if they don't like driving then the whole driving part is just a cumbersome thing they, they just have to you know go through yeah so um yeah uh but at least that's the whole cost you know which one is the best which one <laughs> makes the least least impact on the environment i would say uh tesla is probably the best on that regard because uh, at least most of the part you will drive on like you know um renewable energy yeah we don't know where all the energy comes from but uh i would just claim that tesla is the cleanest way yeah yeah you haters can just ah but you know it's dirty cold no you drive to germany they have lots of renewable spain have lots of renewable yeah they have lots of wind here uh france denmark north yeah yeah let's end the discussion about that stuff there um and also, uh, well, okay, so this was only the travel cost. So I didn't mention, you know, the cost of actually staying here because that depends on how long you stay here. You want to stay for one month or for two weeks or whatever. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's really nice of that guy um, who lent, lent me his um, apartment here for free. It's an Airbnb apartment, so I'll just put it on the description, I guess. Yeah, it's very really nice. So we stay here for six nights. Um, uh, and then, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is, um, actually the last thing I want to talk about is the charging around La Senia, because this is also something uh, some people ask me about, uh, Norwegians actually, like, okay, how is it over there? Well, um, over here, it's like a wasteland compared to Norway or many other places in Europe. It's a wasteland when it comes to, uh, to charging infrastructure. There's almost no public charges here we have electricity everywhere of course but the municipality or or those uh, those uh, like companies that installs public chargers where you have to pay for it whatever you know they never cared about this uh, village or city so uh there's only two shukos at this um, shopping mall in la senia yeah a nice shopping mall and lots of food and stuff and wifey spent a lot of time there so uh uh, the good thing is that there are not too many EVs around here, so uh, especially on weekdays, those shukos are very available. Yeah, I look at it uh, yesterday, I was able to juice up there, today also. Um, but actually, I saw a plug-in hybrid uh, Yeah, at one of them, so I was like, okay. Uh, but uh, when it was weekend on Saturday, it was kind of busy. Then I saw a red Tesla in, in the... In the 
underground parking and then on the other day i saw also a soy so i mean okay so there are some evs here and they probably know that this is the only filling station for them or i don't know but um, as for me because you know this apartment here that we got to uh, use it does not have any shuku or whatever so we have to rely only on juice outside there so that yeah um i guess uh if norwegians consider coming here um yeah, uh, you know, this was, we came here, this is uh, mid-April, and it's it's considered, you know, low season, yeah. Uh, everything is uh, low low here, you know, low people, everything here. Uh, and I guess high season will be way different. More people, um, and more, more uh, like, more, um, we call it, oh, um, <laughs> to, to, more tourists here, yeah. And that probably also means that there will be way more Norwegians here with their Teslas or whatever, most likely just Teslas. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if you will be able to get that Shuku or not. And on the other hand, we stayed at that Shuku today, by the way, uh, for about four hours. And during those four hours, we only gained about 45 kilometers, <laughs> which is like uh, some 30 miles. Yeah. So, um, um, you know, yeah, I, I guess, uh, you could just live on that shuku, but it's going to be very cumbersome and also especially during high season because then you have to you have to battle with the other Teslas you know, to get that juice or whatever. So the best deal would be if, of course, your house here, if you have a Mount Lever house that you have a shuku, then yeah, uh, maybe if you could even offer it to someone else who needs it, that would also be great, your neighbor or whatever, you know, yeah, sharing is caring. Uh, but um, I look at some other options and there is a hotel nearby here with um, 22 kilowatt uh, destination charger and then there is this golf club also nearby here with uh, 11 kilowatt AC but there's only one there and then one on the other place so I'm like okay well I, I didn't even bother to go over there because I have enough juice fortunately uh, so um, um, I was thinking okay um, I could go to the hotel uh, with wifey and ask them, okay, uh, I mean, this it's for customers and uh, preferably for people who sleep over there at the hotel, you know, probably some expensive hotel. Well, it's expensive ish, it wasn't too bad, it was like 100 euros. Um, but, um, oh, no, actually, it wasn't 100, it was about 80 euros per night, yeah, uh, low season time, yeah, <laughs> high season time might be higher, uh, but, um. Well, we're not gonna stay there overnight, so it would just be for a lunch. Uh, okay, will they? Is it okay for them to uh, to give us free juice while we're charging? Uh, twenty-two kilowatt is pretty good. If this car is fitted with twenty-two kilowatt, uh, I mean dual charger, then you get about hundred kilometers per hour, and then a long lunch ish, let's say one and a half hours, you get one hundred fifty kilometers, which is way more than you would get at that uh, shopping mall, you know? Or the golf club. Uh, we don't play golf, but I guess if you play golf or if there are other activities there around the golf uh, club, I don't know what they do there. You can hang out there for the whole day. That's only 11 kilowatt, but uh, you would get enough juice to fill up your car. Uh, but on the other hand, again, um, high season, might be more people. And then, you know, you come there expecting to get juice. And then there's another test Norwegian Tesla there. And like, mm, what the heck? Yeah, so uh, I don't know. Um, or there's always always this uh, more reliable option, which is in Murcia, about 45 kilometers from here. There's a shopping mall, and they have 12 stall. Well, I think it's 12 stall. I'm not sure, but uh, because the, the well, actually, I can look at the map because when I look in Supercharge Info, it says six stalls, and that is not correct. But if I see here, oh, it's 10 stalls. Okay, yeah, 10 stall supercharger in Murcia. Uh, 45 minutes from here uh, so again that's a similar shopping mall that we have here but it's bigger uh, more stuff yeah uh, just you know give the credit card to wifey and then woo she disappears then we get juice for the car yeah <laughs> uh, but it's it's very cumbersome because I mean you, you have to drive there right to juice up enough a lot 99 percent or whatever you know 100 percent and then come it's not like you cannot rely on supercharger only because then you have to go there every i don't know uh, three days to one week you have to go to murcia and juice up there and come back here so you have juice for local runs um so it's i don't know, I, I went there when we came here 
we stayed there for two days and then we went back to Murcia. Well, actually, on the way, okay, let me explain here. So on the way here from Valencia, um, if you go directly here, it will be faster. But we took the detour via Murcia, which is also a 45 minute detour. But I did that purposely because I knew that there were very few charges there. So you can also do the same thing if you come from Norway or whatever you come from, you know. You would probably come from the same direction anyway, if it's France or Netherlands or whatever. Uh, then in Valencia, go to Murcia and then use up enough, take a lunch there, whatever. Let your wife go run free uh, and then use up to 95, 100%. Uh, actually, you should use up to 100%. That's what I did purposely again because um, I knew that I have done several, like, uh, you know, several fast charging sessions and I did it. I did 100% to to calibrate and balance the battery so I won't get any surprises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I need to explain more about that. But um, so I did that. Yeah. And then, but on the, on the, after two days, we went back there again because I wanted to meet some followers and the wife wanted to, uh, I don't know, shop there a bit. So that is an option, yes, if you want to juice up there uh, so you get enough juice for local runs over here. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I heard from uh, local people, uh, Spanish people, that um, uh, they, they, this uh, this company, uh, there's a company in, in Spain which uh, installs these public chargers they have to pay for. Uh, they are planning on making more here, but yeah, so I hope that will come because I mean this area has lots of Norwegians, Swedes, especially Swedes or Russians or whatever and lots of tourists here. They come here um, and uh, there, there will be more and more EVs uh, and I don't know, this, it's, it's a no-brainer because you know, take for example today we went to the shopping mall and we stayed there for four hours and you know, the electricity cost here is about 20 cents, 20 euro cents per kilowatt hour. And on the Shuko, you can only output about three kilowatt. So that means 60 cents per hour for electricity. Free electricity for us, right, as customers. Um, we stayed there for four hours, so that's 2.4 euros. Uh, and then we spent 210 euros in shopping stuff. So it's a really good deal for, for the shopping mall, you know, or for whatever business they, if they want to, if you're listening, Hula! I mean, hula! If you're listening, if you want customers, just give them some free juice. Yeah, it can be Shuku, it can be, I don't know, Type 2, 3.7, even 7.4 kilowatt. Yeah, and maybe not too fast. If it's too fast, then people just stay there not long enough, but at least like 7.4 is good enough. Then they stay there, they spend some time. We had, we had uh, breakfast, lunch there. We shopped a bit, we bought lots of groceries for, for Norway, yeah, because it's cheaper here. So, it's a no-brainer, yeah. Uh, just give them free juice and uh, the customers will come running, at least, especially, you know, Norwegians or Swedes or whatever, who people who have EVs, yeah. So, yes, very long uh, rambling about the whole experience with uh, Spain here, so, um, I'll, I hope this was useful for you. It was interesting for me to come here and uh, experience this. Nice weather here, nice food, yeah. Maybe we'll come back, mm, not sure, but uh, yeah, it's it's a very long drive here. Yeah. But yeah, so I think uh, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, so talk to you later.